Often you hear there are two ways of approaching meditation. One is to put in lots of miserable effort. You stress and you strain with your eyes set on some time in the future when you finally will become awakened. The other alternative is to realize that the Dharma is all around you in the present moment. You just relax into the present moment and there you are. Now, if those were the two only alternatives, the second one might be a reasonable approach. But actually, there are, there are other alternatives as well. One is to realize that, yes, awakening is not here yet, it's someplace in the future. But to get there, you have to focus on here. And focusing here is not just a matter of relaxing. There's work to be done. And in order to make it all the way there, you have to learn how to enjoy the work here. In other words, the effort in the meditation doesn't always have to be miserable. It doesn't always have to be a matter of stressing and straining. There will be times when it does require that kind of effort. Right effort doesn't mean middling effort all the time. Sometimes it means very subtle effort. Sometimes it means a lot of effort. The question is, what's the effort that's appropriate for right here, right now? If you notice, as we were chatting just now, the different factors of the a noble path, when you got to a right effort, you're told to generate desire. And one of the best ways of generating desire is to learn how to enjoy the effort. In other words, to take joy in abandoning unskillful qualities and to take joy into developing skillful ones. That's one of what they call the customs of the noble ones, or the traditions of the noble ones. And that actually gets results. And John Lee has a good analogy. He says the practice is like trying to get fresh water out of salt water. The fresh water is already there, but just allowing that salt water to sit for a while is not going to get the salt to separate out. You have to distill it, and the fire of your distillery is the analogy for the effort that goes into it. If you don't put in the effort, you're never going to get the fresh water out of the salt water. But the trick is learning how to sustain effort, how to take joy in effort. And this connects to something else in the practice. The One of the qualities I've noticed is common among all the forest of Johns, in spite of all their different personalities, is they all like to figure things out. In other words, they're not the type of people who will simply do as they're told, and hope that simply by doing as they're told they're going to come out the other end. In every case, they found aspects of the path that were like riddles, which you had to figure out. Not necessarily an, an intellectual figuring out, but the type of people who like to figure out skills. They see a practical problem and they try to find different ways of figuring it out. So that's a quality you want to bring to the meditation. Notice what you're doing with the breath, and notice what things seem to be problematic. Usually it's a physical pain in the body, but sometimes it's an emotional pain. And try to figure out how the breath can help. 
Notice how you breathe. When you're breathing, where does the in-breath start? Which point in the body does the in-breath energy, that, that swelling of the abdomen, the swelling of the chest, where does it start? And when it ripples through the body, this in-breath impulse, does it ripple through smoothly, or are there places where it's caught up, where it's blocked, where it's tensed? Can you un unravel the blockages? That's one thing you might want to, if you find this an interesting problem, work at it. See what you can do. In other words, learn how to pose questions about the breath and also learn how to notice exactly what are the problems here right now. And can you figure out a way in which they're connected? Another common tendency in the forest tradition is not to explain everything beforehand. Because I want to give each meditator the opportunity to figure things out. Because the things you've learned by figuring them out, they stick with you much longer than things that you're told. That's one reason. The other reason is a lot of our internal problems are extremely internal. The way mental events relate to physical events within you, only you know. Your internal dialogue uses words, uses language in a particular way that only you know. And so you have to learn how to phrase the questions and then come up with answers in ways that are particularly appropriate for your case. So if you can learn to enjoy this process, you're already halfway there more than halfway there. If you see the effort simply as a chore, something you've got to get through, you're going to miss an awful lot. And you're going to end up to the point where you say, this is not working at all, maybe I want to go back to what, back in the 19th century they called the gospel of relaxation. This has been with us for a long time in America. The idea, if only we could learn how to relax, everything would be okay. What's happening there? It's to take an analogy from the text. The Buddha talks about right effort versus wrong effort. Right effort says, if you want to get milk out of a cow, you learn how to pull out the udder. Wrong effort is if you try to get milk out of a cow, you twist her horn. Now, if you're engaged in twisting your horn, you're twisting it really hard, you're putting a lot of effort into it, but you're not getting any milk. It might be a good idea to relax, but the relaxing is not the solution. It's a part of the solution. Then the next part of the solution is to say, what other parts of the cow can I squeeze? And you look around, you try squeezing her leg, that doesn't work. You try pulling her tail, she kicks you. And finally, you pull her udder, okay, then you get milk. In other words, relaxation is the solution if you've been putting effort into the wrong area, if you've been engaged in wrong effort. But if you're engaged in the right effort, you can just keep at it. Keep on getting results. The more you get results, the more you find a joy in the effort, and the more you find joy in trying to figure things out even more subtle levels. So to do well at the meditation, it's a matter of, one, of being willing to put in the effort, and two, learning how to enjoy the effort. Learning how to puzzle things out, and to enjoy puzzling things out. Because there's no one method where you simply do as you're told, noting, 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 without thinking. That's simply a concentration exercise. It's a mindfulness exercise. But there's got to come a question in the mind. What are these assumptions I'm carrying in here? 
How could I do this more efficiently? What am I doing that I'm not noticing? How can I learn how to notice it? Can, how can you catch the mind as it's about to let go of its mindfulness? It sounds impossible, but it's not. When you learn how to post questions in the mind like this and you enjoy trying to find the answers, that's what's going to get you along the path. And it's perfectly all right to think about getting along the path. After all, that's how the Buddha taught. A lot of people like to second-guess the Buddha, say he couldn't really mean what he said. There must be something behind all this, and you try to figure it out. Try to clone awakening without having to go through the path. But one of the features of the forest traditions, they took the Buddha at his word. He said, okay, follow the Vinaya. They follow the Vinaya. Develop right concentration, which means John. Okay, they do that. Learn how to question things in terms of the Four Noble Truths. And then what you arrive at is going to be something that lies beyond the path. But you can't get to the beyond unless you go through the path. So take the Buddha at his word. There's right effort. And the Buddha singled out three of the most important factors of the path. The right view, right effort, right mindfulness. And these are important in the sense that they are the most important helpmates or requisites for right concentration. Those are the ones you want to focus on while you're here. Right view, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. They all involve doing things, developing things, and they all involve letting go. If you learn how to take joy in the developing and joy in the letting go, you're on the noble path. And it's not a bad place to be. It's better than being in a place where you're trying to clone awakening. And you end up with nothing but wrong view and wrong mindfulness and wrong all the way down the line. So take the Buddha at his word and be up for the challenge, because it's a lot of fun. <laughs>